Hello. This short video is simply just going to explain how we uh, theorize the concepts of friction which I've already shown to you in practical ways. And the idea being the actual way we calculate the force, the assumptions that are given in these equations. So this isn't very long, but it's important to remember these basic ideas. <clears throat> so I'd like to just take a moment here and do a little demonstration to show you some concepts of friction. One of the things that happens to a student sometimes is you have a piece of paper and it's near the edge of the desk and you're busy, you lose pay attention and the paper starts to fall off the desk and what do you do? You slam your hand on the paper preventing it from going off the desk. Now let's think about what we're doing when we do that. The paper is still the same, it's no different, it's exactly the same paper it's always been. But the difference is, is the force that we are using to press the paper against the desk has significantly improved. And that is more than enough to stop the paper from sliding and then you can recover it. This force that we use to push two surfaces together caused by whatever means. In horizontal vertical cases, gravity of course is an obvious example, <clears throat> but we can have cases where we're pushing in other directions. And of course, inclined ramps where part of the force may be gravity, but there may be other factors as well. <clears throat> we can see naturally, if we have two books here, that pushing this book is comparatively easier than pushing this book. This book is uh, significantly heavier. We can see also that the surfaces of the books, the texture is roughly the same but this book has more surface area. It is easier to push the book this way than it is to push the book this way. That the area of the surface matters. If we were to put sandpaper between these surfaces, then the ability to push it would be significantly increased. Or the, the effort that's necessary to push it would be increased. And so we begin to find <clears throat> that we have this normal force. And we can do experiments to show if everything else is equal, the force to push something against a surface uh, is proportional to how hard you're pushing down on the surface between the two together. Uh, and then there's this magic of the texture and the area. We know if we look at these things in microscopic view, that the surfaces will look like a mountain range. And because of that, we're not sure what parts of the surface are actually touching. And when you press, more of them will touch, less will touch. As you run this object on the surface, you can expect some of those peaks will get damaged, which will mean that the surface that's in contact is really a dynamic, constantly changing thing. They might only bend or, or, or compress and then when you take them out the air, they're back again. There's an old saying that it's harder to get something to start something than it is to keep it going. Now that's meant as a philosophical perspective as well as a, a practical one. If we get this book going, pushing it is harder than keeping it moving. Getting it started is harder than keeping it moving. Uh, and this is even more obvious with a heavier book. And so what's happening at the micro scale is that these rough edges here are interlocking somewhat with the ones on the other surface. And then when you get it moving, they're bouncing and the interlocking is not as, as strong. And this reduces the effective fr frictional coefficient. And this is why we have to have uh, static coefficients of friction as well as kinetic versions of it. So the two come together. So it's just a little uh, example with some simple things, but you take the example of the piece of paper falling off your desk. If this was a piece of heavy sheet metal, putting your hand on wouldn't do it because the force pulling and the amount of friction you generate here would not be sufficient. And this is why we have to use more aggressive things. So think about when you're a carpenter and you want to hold something, you, you don't just hold it with your hand, but you use a clamp. Okay, and you can put substantial forces on that so that this object is held firmly 
by that we mean it takes a very substantial force to dislodge it. So there we want, we need enormous amounts of friction. So because what we're doing to the material is we're parting some significant forces. And, and so then the clamping force must be very aggressive. And that's generally done. Uh, clamps and so forth are generally just adding enormous amounts of norm normal force to push the two surfaces together to cause the frictional force to take effect. So I've already shown you a little bit of, uh, in a demonstration, a little bit about friction. But let's just summarize a bit here and understand where the uh, expression comes from. Because there's some things we need to remind ourselves of here. So the force of friction itself as a vector has a direction and uh, a magnitude, as we all know, because of vectors. Okay. And so the force of friction will oppose the velocity vector every time. But it may also, in some complex way, depending on the question, also oppose the net force. So anytime you're trying to change motion, it's going to affect you as well. And we have to look at each question individually to see exactly how that will play out. Now, at this level, overwhelmingly, we're going to be dealing, for the most part, with these two ideas separated. Okay? So don't worry about it too much. But for just now, we can always sense that the force of friction will oppose our velocity vector. And it will oppose if we try to move something uh, and, that, and it resists that motion. Okay? Now, the magnitude is a different thing, so we calculate friction, the direction is generally inferred, and then we calculate the um, <clears throat> magnitude based on these three relationships. First, we show that the normal force, the force of how we're pushing the two surfaces together, is directly proportional. So if we push twice as hard, we get, for whatever others, other, everything else being kept the same, if we push twice as hard, we get twice as much friction. If we push half as hard, we get half as much friction, and so on. It's a linear relationship. Now, my suspicion is it'll be slightly different than that if you practice, but it won't be because this is not true, it'll be for other reasons. We also know that if we increase the area of contact, uh, we will increase the magnitude of the frictional force. We also know that if the material in between the two surfaces is rougher, uh, that this will increase uh, the frictional force. Now, in reality, as I said a minute ago, things can change a bit because as these things rub, the area can be, damage can be done between those two surfaces. And you may get uh, a change to the amount of area, which may also result in a reduction, if you will, of the, ten, of the texture. So this will all depend on the quality of the materials and their durability and so forth. But the point, as I mentioned earlier, is it's extremely difficult to measure the area and or the texture in a quantitative way. We all know at microscopic level, almost everything is got, looks like the Himalayas. Uh, we also recognize that then what, what area is truly in contact? If the surfaces are so rough, they're making contacts at the, the sharp points, they're not making contact in unified areas. So there's a whole pile of complexity there that would be quite difficult to manage. And in addition, as these things rub, damage is being done and thing, it is a constant state of change. So what happens instead is we surrender and we compute a coefficient, okay, based on these two ideas for the most part, called a coefficient of friction, in which, uh, it, and this then removes this from proportionality to inequality. So you have the force of friction is equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. Okay, and the normal coefficient is broken into two different considerations. This is the static case. And this is the kinetic case. And when you are two surfaces are close together, <clears throat> are stopped, and they're not moving, their surfaces interlock a little bit more. In the case of two surfaces that are moving, they tend to bump a little bit and they run a little smoother. And so the coefficient of friction tends to drop as the objects begin to move. And this is ignoring any other damages or circumstances that might occur uh, in these situations. So you have to transfer, okay? So this is important when you're solving these problems is that you start with mu sub s and after motion, 
we move to mu sub k. Okay? Now, it's not difficult. Uh, none of this is, is a difficulty. Uh, it is simply a matter of paying attention. And this is where practice comes in. I'll make another, another point here, of course, is this is measured and it is in, there are no units to the coefficient of friction. Okay? So it's just a constant. It's just a number that's measured by experiment. So this gives us this basic law of the uh, frictional calculations. And then we'll go from there. So now you have the basic ideas of how we theorize and calculate uh, the concept of friction and uh, what assumptions are made. So hopefully this will help you in your studies. And thank you for watching.